Hello, everybody, and welcome to episode 30 of OmniFactory, the big three zero. My name is ZDSauce, and I made some changes in between episodes. Um, right off the bat, you might notice a few things. So I made a few more interfaces with molecular assemblers just to expand how much uh, crafting we can do, like crafting as in not connected to the machines. Um, so if we look at our actual interfaces, we have a bunch more slots, and you can also see I've made a few more patterns, and I'm sure this will fill up very quickly, and, I'm, and that wall will expand a bit more in the future. Um, I also made another crafting CPU as well as some co-processing units. So I believe how these work is that I can still only do three simultaneous crafts, but let's say if I was crafting up like a refined circuit, for example, and that needed to make like the different subcomponents and stuff like that, it could do those at the same time. But it's not like I could start four different crafts. I can, I'm still limited to like manually starting three different crafts. I believe that's how it works. Um, <clears throat> let's see, what else? I also changed this water slightly because I actually, I know last episode I said the, uh, the line of water works well, but I actually did run into some interesting uh, issues with that. So I think the two by two works a lot better. Uh, for here, I didn't change, I didn't change much. I am just cooking up a lot more of these plastic circuit boards. So that will slowly get there. Um, I, I made four vibrant capacitor banks, so I have a 100 million RF buffer now, which is pretty nice to have. Not that we've run into any issues, but I just want to make sure that we don't, because these dynamos were powering everything directly, so I wanted to make sure we weren't going to run into any issues there. Um, I also made a flux capacitor, so because I had my the power in my jetpack and leggings and boots go down a little bit quicker than I was thinking, so this holds like 90 million RF, so and it, and it automatically gives power to my armor and then also the staff of traveling so that's nice to have i don't want to worry about um <clears throat> power for a good bit uh continuing to cook up some more blast furnace stuff uh slowly but surely i mean i pretty much always have this thing running and i'm gonna make more soon didn't do much over here um but over here you can see i have a few more chests and everything i made an ore washer and the reason for doing this is because i am washing ilmenite i think that's how you say it and that's because that is probably one of our best ways to get rutile. Um, we can we have a decent chance of getting it when we pulverize the purified version, and then also when we centrifuge this, we get rutile here. And then I don't think okay, we can get rutile from this as well if we want. Um, but yeah, because that's something I want to get into, and that's going to give us titanium, which is needed for the next stage, which we're not quite there, but I wanted to set up at least some stuff. And then I've, I'm also. Uh, Mass running up some bauxite because that is also used for uh, for the rutile a, a little bit. Um, yeah, I think that pretty much covers it. Uh, so, oh, also, I got a couple more drives, um, or one more drive and a couple more discs, and I really like the symmetry now. It's very nice. Uh, anyway, so, <clears throat> yeah, I did a good amount in between episodes, but what I want to focus on today is a bit more automation before we go down the rabbit hole any further with HV. Um, I have some some cool ideas. I think I might have mentioned this a little bit last episode for how to actually set up um, our crafting on demand uh, with these machines a little bit better. So I, I made a bunch of stuff. Uh, you can see I have like three compressors, three wire mills, and I'm gonna see if I can uh, do something. It's it's living in my mind, and I saw it on Discord not too long ago, and I think it's a really good idea. But what I'm going to need is let's get a couple of these storage crates. And I think that's everything I'll need. I don't think this is going to be too hard to set up, but let's just do it in like, let's say this corner. Um, I don't have any wiring over here yet, but we can probably set that up relatively easily. Um, for now though, so let's see. I can probably set it up in the corner and I want to see how I can do this, but the idea is that I'll have a CEF and that will give power upwards and then there'll be one energetic alloy and then how I want to do things is kind of have my, I want to have like four machines all there and then grab my other compressor, which doesn't have anything right now. So that's good. So I, this CEF can only power four machines at once and that's exactly what it's doing. And I mean, we haven't hooked up power yet, but once we do, that should work. And then what I want to do is Let's see, no building blocks again. Give me this. <laughs> Probably have to take it out eventually anyway. Oh, that didn't, that did not work well. 
What happened there? Um, let me restart really quick. Okay, I just restarted Minecraft, and that seemed to uh, to do the job there. Um, okay, so if we have this here, and then what I want to do is basically surround this with interfaces. <coughs> and I guess my patterns are over there. That's okay. So, how do I do this easily? <laughs> it's like annoying. Interface there, 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 there. And then if I take my item conduits, and I basically want to be pulling items out of here, but round robining them to all the different machines. So if I request like a hundred copper plates or something, the idea is that it would split it 25 each, and then these would all run and then input back into an interface and, and work well. And also we can, we can store up to, what is it? So you can do nine each, so we can store up to 36 patterns in here. We can probably also do one on top if we want to, um, or we could just make more storage crates and have them pipe into the same system. But I just think this is a much more efficient way to do things. I could just make multiple compressors um, and then have all the interspaces directly on them, but this will kind of help even out the workload a lot more. Um, <clears throat> so if I can get all of that in there. So this is going to extract always active. And then I think these are all just going to like insert on brown into the actual interface. And these won't be extracting, right? And then these will insert on green and extract on brown. And I think that should do it because this is taking out on green. And I think that should that should do it, I think. Um, so what was it? Instruct. Let's see if I can remember how to do this. Okay. And I think that's right. Yeah, they're all extracting on brown. All the interfaces are inserting on brown. So basically it will just throw items in here, evenly distribute them, and then pull them out into our ME interface. I think that should work. So let me grab some patterns and I'm just going to divvy them up for now. It, it shouldn't matter, but just so I can tell in my actual interface terminal, uh, like which small storage crates are our, uh, our ME ones, I'll probably need that. And then the other thing we're going to have to do is also wire this up. So I think I have power somewhat nearby, right? And then I have a good amount of end steel conduits. That should work pretty well. So if we bring that over here, I should probably get a faster pick as well. Or I should make one of those drills. I know there's a quest book about that, just because those drills, they, they're they good for a couple reasons. They power on RF, so it's never going to break. I'm never going to have to worry about that. And then you can also, I'm pretty sure you can like change how many blocks. Like You can do a 3x3 three three really easy, which... If I ever have to mine again, which I'm assuming I will at some point, um, that'll be nice to have. Cool. So bring it over here. I like putting the wires underneath the uh, the wireframe wireframe blocks. I think that's nice. So this has power now. That's good. I like to see that. Um, I won't bother cleaning this up just yet. And then I think the other thing we're gonna have to do is also hook up the actual me conduit so if i do that everything should be online if i do that i believe and then i can just bring this on down it should work right i hope so i hope i have enough as well and then i'm assuming there are yeah there's me conduits to go into there yep that's all hooked up okay Getting weird little bits of lag. So if we head over to our actual terminal, we should see these uh, small storage crates. Okay, except it's saying two of them are hooked up to nothing. You know what, it actually, I don't think I actually hooked that up correctly. Because yeah, these aren't attached at all. For the sake of symmetry, let's just put it all around. Oh, that looks, that looks pretty nice actually. It's a, it's a nifty little design. Um, now are they all hooked up? And they all should be attached to this small storage crate, I believe. Again, I'm kind of winging this, so I hope it works out all right. Yeah, I don't know what this nothing one is. Oh, it's uh, it's the one that I took the compressor from. Okay, so I do have my four patterns, so I can put my other patterns in here. I think you might also be able to rename, um, which is pretty nice. But now, let's test something out. What... Do, what do I need more plates of? Uh, let's go for stainless steel. So if I say, like, I want 50 stainless steel, 
Let's run over there. And yeah, this is awesome. It looks like they're, they're all getting distributed evenly. And then they all compress up and then they should go back into their interfaces. And it's pretty much four times as fast as just using one compressor. Um, obviously at the cost of four times more machines and interfaces, but I think it's it's a nice little setup. Um, I'm pretty pretty proud of this design. It's, it's decently compact, which is nice. Um, and then we can pretty easily like, cover things up. And yeah, that'll, that'll look pretty nice. I'll finish covering that up later. But, and then that should have completed the craft. Right? Yeah, it did. Awesome. And now we also have space to make a bunch more patterns, which is nice. So I also want to do one for wire mills. Um, and then I might do lathes eventually as well, but we don't have too many patterns with that yet. So I don't think it's too big of a deal. Um, but wire mills is definitely a big one. Um, yeah, so, but but you guys get the point. So I'll, I'll not do that one on camera, but I'll, I'll set that up really quick and then we should be good to move forward with some other stuff. Oh yeah, that looks awesome. It's super high tech. I also uh, rotated around these ones so that when you look at it, it's just all symmetrical. And then from above, it looks great too. The, the actual Emmy conduits, like so symmetrical and nice. Um, I do want to try something. I think, I think this is how you, uh, you get the different name in the actual interface terminal. So this is, so if I just call this like the wire mill crate or something, it just takes a level and let's see, I think that should work. I don't see why it wouldn't. I know there's some way to do it and I think this is it. So if I do that, it's it's renamed technically. It looks like it doesn't show on the tooltip, but if I go into here, ah, that didn't work. Hmm. Well, I can look into that. I'm sure there's some way to do it. I'll, I'll try and figure that out. Um, but I guess we'll, we'll just have to use small storage crate for now. Um, but yeah, so I'm assuming that should work the same way. Let's, we can, we can also test that out though. Uh, copper wire is always good to have. Oh, I didn't enable round robin, did I? That's an issue. Okay. Now it's distributing them out all evenly. This one got a little bit more than uh, the other ones, I guess. And yet should be extracting, throwing it back into the interfaces. Yeah, looks like that, that worked pretty well. It's super fast. Um, is the crafting done? It is, cool. So yeah, I think in the future, if we, if we find ourselves getting delayed on the lathe and other stuff, um, we can definitely also do those to improve them. Um, do I have more? I do. We also, these aren't hooked up now that I took them out. I'm gonna clean up this, uh, this section a lot because I want to open up this doorway here. And that was part of the thing I, I was thinking of doing to actually do that. And I think this line will probably just be our assembling machines. And I'm going to make one more for rubber. But again, that is something I will probably do off camera. Um, yeah, cool. So that's the first little automation thing I wanted to do. The next thing I want to do is also automate these inscribers, uh, which is pretty nice to have. Right now, I just, I've just i just been having this chest with the patterns and then I, whatever I need, I throw it in here and let, let stuff happen. But I think this should be very easy to automate. Um, so yeah, let me, let me take everything out. And I think we can do this with only one interface, which should be pretty nice. Um, right now it's just hooked up. I want to make sure I'm not breaking anything. Take these acceleration cards back. It is just hooked up right here, um, but I'm thinking if we just throw an interface like right here and then have a like a chest buffer, um, I think it should work fine if we just, looks like those are configured some way. If we just have a line of inscribers here, though, what's this for? Oh, okay. Um, if I pop the Emmy conduit there, okay, another inscriber here, and then I have one more. Um, and these, these are pretty easy to make. Uh, that's why I figured I would just do it, do it off camera. Um, oh, you know, I'll probably have to, what's, what's that saying on the interface terminal right now? Is it saying the chest? Okay. It, it is looking at the chest. Is there a way, can I like make this point? If I take this out, okay, now will it definitely look at the chest? I always kind of wondered how that worked. Okay, cool. Um, 
Yeah, that looks good. So this chest is going to be a buffer chest, basically. And then each one of these inscribers are going to just be dedicated to a different type of press. So like the first one will be silicon. We can do logic. The order doesn't really matter. And the nice thing about this is that we really don't... Um, we don't have to worry too much about like filtering these because when a silicon press is in there, here, let's take, do I have anything I can use? I think I've cooked them all up, but okay. When essentially a, when a, a silicon press is in here, only silicon plates are allowed. Nothing, nothing else can go in. Um, like no matter what I click. So filtering happens kind of naturally, except for this last one. I think we will have to filter. Um, but let's, let's, Let's not worry about that quite yet. Um, let's set up our actual AE stuff. Um, I guess this is also going to have to extract somehow and then get inserted into this interface. Hmm. I'll move this up one or... Okay, for now, I will do it the old fashioned way. Um, <clears throat> I think that's fine. So yeah, let's just have them all extract on brown. They should be a different color than what we're inserting on because we don't want them to get extracted and then pop over to this one because this is going to be used to make the actual like calculation press um, or, or different types of presses because like an input for that is a printed calculation circuit, which would be the output of like this one. So they should be extracting on a different color so that we are actually completing the crafts. So if they all extract on brown and this gets inserted on brown, that should be good to actually complete everything, and I'll probably do something to make this look nicer as well. Um, now, this is extracting on green, so they all should just insert on green. Cool. And now let's make some actual patterns. Um, so what are some things we're going to need? Uh, like a plate? Are they all plate? Are they all called plates? Um, man, I can't think of the name. So if you have a gold plate and use that... Okay, it's just like a printed logic circuit. So if we want to make this, so we don't need the cap the actual presses because they will always be in there. But yeah, let's make all of these. Oops. So that's all just taking a plate, a plate and transforming it into the actual logic circuit. Oh, and then we're also going to need a silicon, right? That's this one. Cool, and now they should all just go into that chest, I believe. Cool, that looks pretty nice. And then we can also put in the patterns to get the other ones, but first let's let's test this out. Do I have like, I don't really have any of these plates, do I? I might have silicon plates, okay, yeah. So if we wanna make like 10 of these, we should be able to, and it should automatically go in here. Nice, it does, that's great. I have the acceleration cards in here as well, so it goes nice and fast. And then, yep, looks like it's extracting and getting thrown back into this ME interface. So the crafts should be completing, and they are. That's great. So yeah, having this buffer chest should work well. Um, yeah, I think that that's pretty much it. This was pretty easy to set up. But for this last one, I think I am going to need an item filter. <clears throat> um, so let's see how I can do this, because I think I might need more. Does this only do five? It does only do five. Hmm. Because I need to think about this a little bit because I remember I was running to some issue when I was testing this out on the creative world a little bit. Um, like, let's say, for example, hmm. Yeah, maybe I do need filters in all of these. Although, now that they have the logic presses in here, I think it should be okay. Um. I think my main concern, oh, you know what I need? Okay, I need to blacklist the inputs for these different inscribers because, yeah, yeah, that, that, that should work because this only takes in the actual like printed logic circuit. So this will take in one of these four things and then also the circuits, um, but it could also take in something like a gold plate. And we want to make sure it's not, the gold plates aren't going in here because there's no press to go along with it. Like, you know how, how I was saying, like, we don't have to worry about filtering because they already have the, the actual, uh, 
the logic press or the silicon press in there. In here, like we could we could extract silicon plates out of here and they could get placed in here, but we don't want that. So if we have this insert on green and extract on brown like the rest of them, that is what we want. But yeah, we want to make a blacklist for, I guess I have them here actually, silicon plates. And then we want the other types of circuits. And I think that should be everything, right? I have faith in there. Um, so let's try a few things. Okay, so something I need to, I need to make a, we, we can test out both of our builds at once. So we have a pattern for gold plates right now. So let's put that into one of our platey chests. Um, and now if I say, I wanna request a couple more logic processors. Oh, I actually gotta make the patterns for the processors. Whoops. <laughs> um, cool, except I need the refined circuit. And this should be everything I need for this. Um, let's make just this one for now. And this should also go into that chest. So now if I tried, if I wanna make logic presses, I think this should work. So let's say I wanna make 10 logic presses. So over here, we should see our compressors doing their thing. They're making the actual gold plates and round robining successfully. Although I don't know why that one got three and this one got none. This is round robining, right? I can look into it later, that's okay. And then the gold plates get sent over here to the inscriber and I need to make more acceleration cards for these. And then once the logic circuits come here, we should be getting them into here. I would hope. I can put the acceleration cards in here now. Hello? Interesting. I, I didn't blacklist that, did I? Oh, whoops, I, I blacklisted the wrong thing. I want to be blacklisting gold plates, actually. Um, I can do the other ones later. But okay, now, now it lets in the printed logic circuits and it's getting the actual logic processors. And then it should be extracting that on brown, putting it back into the interface, and we should be good to go. Whew. And now I should have, what What was it, 45 logic presser, processors now? Great. That's sweet. Okay. Um, I'll just set up the patterns for the other stuff. But yeah, that, that's the, pretty much I, the, the idea of it. Um, yeah, that's nice and compact. I think it looks, it looks pretty decent here. Um, but yeah, I'll be right back once I set up the actual... Uh, the actual uh, other patterns. Okay, looking nice. Um, I decided to also make a pattern for using this charger. So I'm pretty sure this charger only has one use and that is to turn um, Certus Quartz Crystals into charged Certus Quartz Crystals. If we take a look, um, there is an easier way to do this once we are able to get the Energetic Infuser, but this is blocked behind a couple things that we can't quite get to, um, which is mainly the mana infused ingots. Um, which we need better blast furnaces for, and we're, we're getting closer to being able to go into thermal machines, but not quite. But the only other way to get this is to actually use the charger. So I think this this should work. I tested one of them, but I haven't tested a few. But like, let's say I want to get 10 of these charged Certus Quartz crystals. The craft does take a while, but what I've done is essentially just also added that pattern to this interface. And then it just, it pops the Certus Quartz Crystals into here, and then once that changes over to a charged Certus Quartz Crystal, it should automatically extract, like so. That one took a really long time, though. Um, and then it throws it back into the interface like the other things do. Um, and one other automation I want to set up over here is using this Crystal Growth Chamber. I think it, it really shouldn't be too hard. Um, we're just going to need another interface, uh, mainly because we don't have enough slots here. But this should be online, right? Cool, it is online. That's the nice thing about working with uh, AE machines is it kind of just works right there. Um, but I think what I'm going to want to do is to, can I, can I filter here? I don't really know how the inputs and extra, in, uh, the inputs and outputs work here, but let's, uh, if we want a couple of these seeds, like can we use, oh, I'm, I'm on the wrong interface. Um, do we have, is there anyone we can make? <laughs> cool, we got Fluix Dust. Um, so if, actually let me make the actual pattern for this, just just because I want to check to make sure this works before I actually make it. So to make one of these pure Fluix crystals, I guess there's no pattern for it, but I want to make a pattern that turns 
one of these new fluix seeds into a pure fluix crystal because that's that's just what happens in the crystal growth chamber um so is the crystal okay the crystal growth chamber is here so i have two of these seeds so let me see what happens when i actually request two of these pure fluix crystals is it able to insert it directly cool it is and now it's charging up and then i want it to extract and put it back into the interface but is it going to wait until it's fully done it looks like it is i was wondering if i had to um if i was going to have to filter it or anything but that that's looking pretty good to me i was going to grab acceleration cards but we're close enough it's interesting that they don't stack um that could be tough if we're trying to do a bunch at once. I, I figured it would stack, but cool. It does it does take it out automatically. Can we make like a bunch more of those? I don't have much fluix distal uh much fluix crystals left. Do I have Certus Quartz dust? Can I use that? Is that is that the pattern with sand? Cool. Let me grab a stack of those and let's try that out. So if I, I want to try it with the pattern though, whoops. So I want a single seed to turn into a single pure Certus Quartz crystal. So now if I try to make a bunch of those, I want to see if it's going to like be able to batch drop them in there. Ah, that's annoying. Hmm. Because now I'm assuming stuff is still stuck in here. Because since they're all at like different percentages, I wonder if there's a faster way to transport items or like make it immediate. It's a nice little pattern of twos it made. Um, but yeah, that means things are going to take longer than expected. I could just throw in acceleration cards and it would probably be quick enough. Actually, how quick does that go with three acceleration cards? Okay, that's that's pretty fast. But yeah, I can't think of anything off the top of my head that would make a good buffer for this, but with the acceleration cards, it's pretty fast, so I'll leave it here. Um, we don't, we probably don't use it that much anyway, um, but it's fine. There's one more pattern we need to make. Uh, I, I can do it later. I, I want to jump into one other automation thing, and then I think this is the last automation thing. There's, oh, there's always more automation to do, um, but I want to automate grains of infinity just because we're getting really low on them, and... <clears throat> It's, it's used a decent amount for infinity gears and, and things like that. So um, for that, I know how you get them normally is by lighting bedrock on fire, but there's another way to do it. And that is with uh, this fire water. And this is made in the vat. So it's another use to use this this vat that we made. And it's it should be pretty easy to make. The hooch is made just with seeds and water. Although it looks like we need some kind of sugary thing as well. Um, so yeah, I'm going to try to make some of the hooch, and then it's a much lower percentage to get them off of fire water, but it should work all the same. So I think if you just like put a bunch of fire water there, um, the idea is that the, it won't actually despawn ever. Um, it, it's not like it consumes the fire water or anything, so it can just be a passive way to get grains of infinity, and then we can just use some kind of ender chest to, uh, to port it over here. Um... But yeah, and then I'll use a range collector when the when it actually does pop off, and then I think I think that should work. Uh, I don't see why not. I tested it briefly in the creative world, and and that seemed to to be all right. But yeah, let, let's try to make this hooch. So that takes water. Which do I have? Water in here? I got a little bit of water. And then we need like seeds, and then also something sweet. Uh, I don't know if we can use sugarcane directly, but let's play around with it. This is something I've never made before, so we will see if it works. Um, so I throw in seeds. Okay, it looks like the sugarcane does not work. So I can pulverize, pulverize that up a bit to get a little bit of sugar. <clears throat> and then if we, the other thing we're going to need is just water. I think that was it. Water. And then we're going to need enough to get a bucket's worth of hooch. And then once we put in blaze powder and redstone... That should do the job and get the bucket that we want. So do I just right click it? Okay, that worked. And now I will take my sugar, please. Cool, that seems to be working. I don't know how much it's going to make, <laughs> uh, but we will see. 
Am I gonna need more sugar? I'm, I'm assuming yes. Oh, look, it's the perfect amount. Okay. Awesome. So that's gonna make a bucket exactly. And then we can extract the bucket. And yeah, that should work. Let me get a blaze powder and a piece of redstone. Grab that. Oh, actually, I also don't need more sugar. Cool. Awesome. Um, so, will that give me hooch? Cool, it will. And now, can I, like, get rid of that? Okay. And now, if I put in hooch, and then a blaze powder, and a redstone... Cool, we're getting fire water. That is awesome. And yeah, then I'll need to make a range collector as well, and then we should be good. So yeah, it's just a liquid, like any other liquid. Um, I don't know what the other uses are besides getting grains of affinity. Yeah, I think you might be able to use it for power somehow, but I am not too worried about it. Uh, the other thing we're gonna need is a range collector, so that is easy enough to grab. And then we're gonna need, what, an ender chest as well? I made this by accident and I don't know how to get rid of it. I put a diamond onto the, uh, like the knob, like right here. If you if you put a di diamond here, it like makes it your own personal ender chest that no one else can access. Um, but I did it by accident and it uses a different inventory, so it's just, it's kind of a goner. Um, okay, looks like we're gonna need this. Steel plates. Good thing I can make a ton of them super fast. Actually, I want to check to see if that issue is still... Okay, no, it seems to be using them all evenly. The back one, too. Yes, it is. Cool. Love having those automatic resources. It, it doesn't hurt at all to just be like, sure, give me 100 steel plates. That's, that's good to have. Um, so now I can make a chest. And I'll take my... Not an ender tank, but an ender chest. And then I'll make this the same color as the one that has space. And then, same idea, let's just use limited item filter. Because um, this one still has some slots available. Cool. And I think I already grabbed a limited item filter, I'm pretty sure. Um, yeah, that should be everything we got. We got some item conduits. Uh, yeah, let me head to my overworld, get to bedrock, and then I'll be back and we can set this thing up. You ready? I did a thing. Woo! Oh, that's lame. <laughs> uh, yeah, I just mined that little spot, and yeah, you can see some grains of infinity already already popping up pretty easily. Um, so yeah, you don't need a source block, it looks like. Um, so I only needed one bucket, that is correct. I was, I was a little bit worried about that. Um, but yeah, let me just, I think this is the center. I don't really know the range on the range collector, but I'm hoping that it should be able to go at least eight blocks to pick things up. And then if we just whitelist on here, I think that should be good. Um, let me turn, whoops, that. I'll turn off the attraction for right now. So one just popped and yeah, it looks like that went from 13 to 14 into this range collector. So it seems to be doing its job. And then this is also chunk loaded. Um, I, I purposefully kind of set this thing up uh, where we do have the chunks. I guess this one block isn't, but I don't think that's gonna matter too much. Um, yeah, so I think this should work. So if I just set up this ender chest, um, I don't, I don't think I need access to open it really. Or I guess I can just mine out the top. Um, look at those polyethylene sheets. Hey, that might be backstopped. I think we might have twenty forty eight of those. Um, and then yeah, if we just pipe in, because the only thing this is really gonna, I guess it's whitelist on grains of infinity. The only thing it's really gonna have is grains of infinity. Um, so that should just be able to insert it right into here. And then I do want a limited item filter so that we can back stuff appropriately. So I'm going to say, like everything else we've done, you can only have a stack of grains of infinity, and then it should just back stuff in this range collector. And I think it's going to take a really long time to get to that point, but um, worst comes to worst, there'll just be like grains of infinity everywhere and nothing to pick it up. But I mean, I don't think that's going to cause much lag because I won't actually be here. It'll be chunk loaded, but I don't think it'll make a difference. But yeah, that's that's collecting a bit faster than I thought. Actually, that is that is not bad at all. Um, but yeah, I'd say that's pretty much all we need here. I, I believe that should work even when I'm not in the area, but I guess time will be the true test of that. Let me just jetpack on back up here. 
uh, go over here into the lag city and back to the void world. Okay. Ooh, that brought me right there. Uh, I can also enable this attraction again. Enable attraction. I wish you could have that in real life. Um, we'll get another drawer. And I believe this should be locked by default when it's connected up, but I just so that I hopefully don't. Okay, it is cool. Um, and now if we take some of those grains, actually, I got some in here. I mean, to get to 2000 grains of infinity, that's gonna take a while, but cool. Now it's piping it in there and hopefully that should just continue to uh, do its thing. Looks like we did get a stack of polyethylene. That's awesome. Um, We've we've been using a lot of polyvinyl because I'm I'm making a bunch of a bunch more of the plastic circuit boards, so those are a bit lower than normal. But that's okay. That's why I wanted to have the automation continue to go in our overworld. Um, but yeah, I would say that's Grand of Infinity all automated, um, and that that is the last automation thing I wanted to do today. I unfortunately I don't think we have time to do anything else, but I think we did get a very good amount of stuff done. Um, we got these cool little structures over here that I'm gonna try to figure out how to rename these chests. Hopefully it's not too hard. Um, and then we also set up some nice AE2 automation for all the different AE machines, which I need acceleration cards for. And then we also automated Grains of Infinity. And looks like that is working. It was at 51 before, and now it's at 53. So we should see this number slowly start to rise. And uh, it'll be a lot easier to get Infinity Bimetal Gears and, and things like that. So I would call that a success for sure. But yeah, thank you for tuning into this episode. This is episode 30, so definitely a nice little landmark. I think for 30 episodes, we uh, we have a pretty good thing going. We, we have a pretty nice base. It feels like there's still so much more to do, but that is what I really like about this pack is that like there, there's just so much content and ways to progress, and I never feel like, oh man, I don't know what to do today. It's like, out of the list of 20 things, what should I do? Um, but yeah, thank you for tuning in, and I will see you on the next episode.